Hey there everybody, Aaron here. Welcome to another episode of Gideon's Tactical. Today we're going to be checking out the new for 2014 Gerber Ghost Strike. This is a little skeletonized full tang fixed blade that we're really going to get out here today and take a look at and see if this could possibly be one of the best designed neck knives or skeletonized, you know, kind of mini fixed blades out there on the market or if there's some things that kind of make it fall short. So you're going to have to stick around, watch the video, and I'll let you know at the end what my opinion is and whether or not this is going to be a good purchase for All you. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at some basic specs here on this knife before we get out there and start using it. What you have from the back to the front is an overall length of 6.9 inches. It is an eighth of an inch thick all the way through full tank construction made out of 420 high carbon steel made here in the U.S. We'll talk about that steel here in a little bit with the cutting edge of 2.75 inches hollow grind drop point design plain edged. The handle has a rubberized molding over it kind of like craton gives you a lanyard hole and total carry weight on this item with the sheath that you see in the background is 3.6 ounces which is an awesome carry weight for this size of knife including the sheath very lightweight very slim and as they pitch it to you is kind of this you know concealed self-defense edc blade this is absolutely fitting the bill because of how slim and lightweight it is and all the carry options that we'll see here in a minute on the sheath you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck and a lot of options and just really well designed for what we're looking at here overall so let's go ahead let's start using this knife and take a look at the blade here on the gerber ghost strike all right, let's go ahead and test out what this knife is originally pitched to you as, as a kind of last ditch self-defense knife. So we're gonna do some stabbing here. Really good design on the tip for stabbing tasks. Precise enough to be able to penetrate real well, but also strong enough to take you know that really hard stab even into a harder material like this piece of wood that you see here. And what I'm finding as I'm doing this, that this really deep finger guard right here and finger groove work really well in conjunction with the rubberized kind of traction that they're giving you, similar to Kraton on here, really makes it for a great lockup and I think a fantastic self-defense tool if that's what you're looking for, that you want like a latch di last ditch you know, self-defense knife, that this Ghost Strike could absolutely handle the stabbing task and give you the traction you need so you're not gonna accidentally slide down and really hurt yourself. So they've really designed over there at Gerber a really well-designed last ditch self-defense knife that I think a lot of you out there would be willing to purchase because it can do other tasks and it's not like a, a punch knife you know, or something like that or you know, got a crazy tanto with serrations or something. This very simple, very precise drop point design is fantastic for tactical stabbing right, Let's tasks. go ahead and talk about the blade here and how it performs out there when you're using it in all sorts of different tasks. What you have is a 2.75 inch cutting edge like we've talked about, hollow grind, eighth of an inch thick. 420 high carbon. Now the 420 high carbon I've used from Gerber as well as Buck and it's a good budget steel. It's not 1095, it doesn't hold its edge quite as well as that, but uh, it'll be close to what 1095 can produce. Definitely better and I would take it over say like 8CR 13MOV or 440A, um, but it doesn't rate up there with like 440C and some of the other steels out there. So I would say it's a good budget steel, it's very rust resistant and it will take a really quick edge. I've touched this up a couple times very quickly and I'm able to get a shaving sharp edge edge back on it when it does dull on me and uh, it will hold uh, an edge long enough to get you know your task done without you getting frustrated because you feel like it's dulling all the time so not a bad budget steel and with the overall blade design and that really good sweep up as well as that tip again as you saw in that first stabbing video that we did precise enough to be able to do delicate tasks but strong enough to really take that hard abuse in that wood that we saw there so that's very impressive on that tip and just very well overall designed with that great sweep up. Plain edge, no serrations to worry about. Thank you, Gerber, so much. Please make more knives looking like this. Plain edge, draw point. Love it. So with that, when we got out there and really started to use it, uh, you'll see with the rope cutting, it actually, the factory edge didn't quite go through the nylon rope like I would have liked, so I really quickly ran it through some ceramic rods, and then I was able to go through uh, rope really well. So out of the box, wasn't as sharp as I would have liked for rope cutting, but once I touched it up, it was really easy to go through 
through rope with that really good sweep up so you will be able to do nylon material you might just have to touch it up when you get it out of the box the other things were you know uh, feather stick making basic you know wood processing tasks was able to do that the blade is really well designed for that with that good amount of belly so I was able to get really good feather sticks you know and shavings done if I was having to do, you know maybe do a fire if I was stuck out there or something like that some basic notching you know that type of stuff was absolutely able to do and hold its own compared to other knives like the Nessie Azula, you know, or a BK-14, very similar in its capabilities of feather stick making. Then when it came to cardboard cutting as well, EDC cardboard cutting, easy to go through that, no problems at all. I like how thin the blade is, an eighth of an inch thick, really makes it easy to go through cardboard with that hollow grind. So it will be a good EDC blade as long as you touch it up and again, obviously keep it maintained with that 420. You'll be able to use this, the blade side of it performed with no complaints at all and the overall quality that I'm going to give this knife is I'm going to give it a quality rating of 4 out of 5. 5 out of 5 if it was 10.95 and held a better edge. But as it stands right now, the blade and overall, you know, everything that you're getting with this piece of, of gear, I'm going to give a 4 out of 5 for its quality and what you're purchasing for around 40 bucks uh, when you're getting the Gerber Ghost Strike. So the blade itself performed without any problems at all. Quality rating 4 out of 5. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at the sheath here on the Ghost Strike. And I'm going to tell you right out of the gate, this is a 5 out of 5 on this neck knife. This is literally the best neck knife sheath I've seen on the market compared to BK-14s and SC Azulas and all sorts of other products. This is one of the best, if not the best on the market. So definitely five out of five. You get two little drainage points down here so it won't you know, collect any water. Then what is the best part is right out of the gate, you're able to pull out and deploy your knife very easily, but then you can either put it in just the way you had it or flip it upside down for lefties or just depending on how you're carrying the knife that day, you can easily carry it up or down like that. Very cool. Almost no rattle in there. Very secure, very tight setup, but you don't have to jerk super hard to pull it out so it will easily deploy without any sort of problem. So that is a huge, fantastic setup. They have six lashing points. Two, four of them are taken up by the screws right now. You have these little slits in here as well so you can lash it with paracord onto chest rigs and molly kits and backpacks and all sorts of stuff. Then on the back, they give you these two slits right here so you can either carry your sheath uh, horizontal along your belt and it is very slim extremely extremely slim but uh, that makes it very easy to deploy and pull out and you know carry on a, in a horizontal situation or you can easily unscrew these flip the the slit so that you can then carry it vertical like most you know knives out there and uh, carry it that way if you so desire as well so it's a very very um optional setup for the sheath that gives you tons of carry options it holds the knife securely you can hold it and and Put it into the sheath, left or right, up or down, you know, all sorts of different ways. Very good retention. Five out of five stars here um, with this sheath. Last thing to note is that the holes are not lined up for a normal size blade tech lock. I've not ch checked an extra large size or molly locks that are extra large. Just the average blade tech lock or molly lock will not fit up and line up with these holes. In case you're wondering or interested, they will not do that. you got to come up with a different way. But ultimately, these slits back here are going to give you literally hundreds if not thousands of different carry options and then with paracord you can lash it to anything you could think of so five out of five on the sheath with the ghost strike last thing before we leave the sheath that i forgot to mention is the ankle bracelet you can also get it with an ankle wrap that you can purchase for about another 10 or 15 dollars it can you can purchase it with the kit so you can carry it on your ankle and it's supposed to be really well designed i do not have that model uh, but for about 10 or $15 more, you can purchase that on Amazon or eBay. So tons, tons and tons of carry options with the sheath. Again, five out of five. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at the handle here on the Ghost Strike and its ergonomics. What you have is that, again, full tang skeletonized handle. And what they've done is overlaid it with rubber, kind of a rubberized craton. It's got lots of checkering points, so you can see that real well there. So it's going to give you good traction, and then it's got really good jimping along the bottom side here and give you a really nice deep finger groove so that when I'm locked into place like this and I am doing either a normal stab like this or I am doing a reverse stab like you saw earlier. So in that, that kind of uh, you know, job description of being a self-defense knife. It's fantastic. Really good lockup. As well as just basic EDC tasks, you know, cutting a couple pieces of rope, opening a few cardboard boxes. You're not going to notice anything and it's going to feel fine in your hand. The problem comes into play if you start using this out in the woods. You're not going to enjoy the ergonomics. The reason is I wear large size gloves. You can see there my hands, large. 
I can only get really three fingers onto that handle. And then my pinky kind of doesn't have a place to go. It's either back here or it's kind of trying to jam up here and it just doesn't feel very comfortable. And the fact that I cannot wrap it in paracord. The reason is, is that the way the sheath is designed, the knife slides into place and you can see this entire first gap here is covered up by the sheath and there is no space in between that back part and the knife. So you're not gonna be able to wrap this even in paracord to kind of fill out your hand a little bit more and make it a little comfort more comfortable because when I was doing my cutting tasks of hammer grip, you know, making feather sticks and that type of thing, it began to cramp my hand and cause really bad hot spots in about a minute. So it was not very good. So overall, guys, I'm going to have to give this an ergonomic rating of two out of five. The reason for that, and just kind of show you my thought behind that, is here is a knife that didn't come with handle scales either, but I'm able to paracord wrap it. This is the Shango from Topps Knives. I'm able to wrap it in paracord, and that really fills out my hand and takes away any hot spots or uncomfortability and actually adds to the traction and you can see there I can get my whole hand including my pinky on there with room to spare and this even actually has a slightly smaller blade so I would rate this one say a three out of five and then I would rate say the Essie Azula because it actually has handle scales and again I'm able to get all my hands my pinky and everything on there it really fills out your hand well you can also do paracord if you want this would be a four out of five and then knives in this kind of neck knife range like the BK 14 uh, or the Essie Azula 2 those I would say would be five out of five so as it stands for those tasks that I was originally designed to do of self-defense or just basic EDC it's fine but overall I'm gonna have to give it a two because there's no way to upgrade that handle at all as it stands right now and it's just not very comfortable for a lot of long extended cutting tasks like I wish it was if they had just extended the handle about a half an inch longer it would have helped out a lot and maybe removed the the sheath a little bit so that we could wrap this in paracord would have taken this from an ergon ergonomic rating of two and knocked it up to maybe a three or a four so that's the handle and that's my ergonomic rating two out of five so guys you've seen the Gerber Ghost Strike in action and you've seen its capabilities or lack thereof in certain areas. So now that we have seen it in action, I gotta give you my likability on this. And I'm gonna give it a three out of five. And really the only reason for that is the ergonomics. The fact that I can't wrap it in paracord on the handle without it you know, getting and interfering with the sheath is really kind of the downfall for me because I have pretty large hands, I wear large size gloves, and it just is not easy for me to get a really good grab on it for particularly wood processing and other tasks aside from stabbing and just easy simple you know cardboard cutting and rope cutting for those type of tasks the ergonomics are fine but for extended use it's just not very comfortable and starts to give me some hot spots right away but other than that uh, I mean the blade shape is fantastic Gerber thank you so much please keep doing this drop points with plain edges give us different sizes different designs I think us in the blade community will start to go crazy for more blades in this style plain edge drop point or clip point please the sheath fantastic amazing the quality i believe is there the price points there so i really hope that this video has helped you out maybe this is the perfect knife for you and exactly what you're looking for or maybe you're like me and you're like eh, i really need something really ergonomic uh because you do a lot of outdoor stuff this isn't i would say a great outdoor knife it's definitely a good edc knife but uh, for the ergonomics of outdoor use it's just not quite there for me and a three out of five on the likability scale so guys i really hope that this video has helped point you in the right direction either this is the perfect Perfect knife for you, or you need to pass up the Gerber Ghost Strike and go with some other type of neck knife design. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this particular episode of Gideon's Tactical. Please subscribe, comment, like the videos, share the videos, and check out our Facebook page. You can find it on the YouTube homepage of Gideon's Tactical. Like our Facebook page where you'll get updates of upcoming videos. Uh, you'll get photos as well as upcoming gear, new gear releases, you know, that products and companies that uh, are released, as well as behind the scenes footage and bloopers that you'll never see make it to YouTube. So thanks so much for watching everyone. Stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.